So the Yankees are putting their final touches on the spring training. And next week's opening day, okay? There's still some moves that need to be made. There's two spots they're going to fill on the bench. And I want to talk about that today. Let's get into it right now. Yeah, and good evening, everybody. So the Yankees dropped a 5-2 game to the Braves today. I'm surprised. I mean, some starters were in there, some were not. And But at this point, everybody's healthy for the most part, and they're looking to keep it that way. So we saw, you know, we're seeing some good signs from Judge. Now that he's back, from Giancarlo Stanton, and some of the other folks that are going to be integral parts of this lineup moving forward. So hopefully we'll continue to see that signs. But that said, there is a deadline this week, an opt-out deadline, where players can opt out of their deals, whether they're minor league deal, major league deal, whatever it is, with certain teams that could potentially represent value spots for the Yankees. And what do I mean by that? Well, right now it looks like the Yankees are looking to fill two spots on the bench. So, and I think Trent Grisham has one, the other, you know, either, either uh, Jose Trevino or Austin Wells has the other. But beyond that, we don't know. I don't, I'm not sure they're sold on Oswaldo Cabrera right now. And beyond him, I have no idea. So I'm going to give you four guys here, okay? This is us, Eduardo Escobar with the Blue Jays. He also played the Mets, solid defensive third baseman with a decent amount of contact skills, okay? A little bit of pop in his bat. He'll be available. Well, if he opts out, he'll be available. This is a guy that could represent, again, plays third base. So if DJ happens to be out for a little bit longer than we expected, and it sounds as if he's hoping to be back by opening day, but if he doesn't, Eduardo Escobar could probably be half of the, on the cheap. So he's one name. Next up is Elvis Andrews, former top baseball prospect, okay? They are looking for somebody who can play shortstop as well, and Elvis Andrews represents that exact mold. So he's another guy. Just hits, He hits right, just like Escobar, and but he can do some contact skills, pretty solid defense. And again, you want a veteran bat who can play shortstop, well, there you go. And these guys are veteran players, so they don't necessarily need to play every day, but they'll do the job that's needed them, whether they play every day or whether they play sometimes. And that's key, okay? He's number two. And then you got Matt Duffy from the Texas Rangers. It's another guy, mostly first base. Okay, so in the event that Anthony Rizzo is hurt and we need a backup first baseman, Matt Duffy represents that fit, okay? And he's a guy, again, all these guys are veterans. If they opt out, they can be had on the cheap. League minimum, most likely. And these guys have had springs. So they're in game shape right now. Okay? And lastly is Mike Moustakis. Okay? The reason I like him is because he plays first and third. So if Rizzo happens to go down and DJ happens to not be ready, Moustakis could play first and third, just like DJ. He can represent that fit. He hits lefty. So... He brings that lefty bat here with the contact skills. He has some pop as well. But the ability to play both corner positions could probably be solid value here for the Yankees. And again, all these guys represent veteran presence on this team. So, and if they want to upgrade their bench, this is the kind of how they can, how they can do it at this point. Okay. Those guys, you take a look at it on MLBTradeRumors.com. You'll see the other guys that are on the opt-out list, but most of them you know, would not be addressing needs for the Yankees. These guys would specific infield needs. So, but you let me know what your thoughts are, gang. Again, I'll keep you updated on this. If you're not subbed, hit that sub button before you leave, okay? You hit all your notifications too. That way you don't have to ever worry about that again. If you enjoy the content, hit the like button too. I right, thank you so much for that, okay? And th this is one of the, I think, the final pieces of the puzzle that the Yankees are looking to put together. So one reason why they're playing a lot of their reserves right now because they don't know yet who's going to occupy the bench spots, okay? So I think it's going to go right down to the wire. But these are guys that have opt-out clauses in their contract. So I, I would imagine a couple of them would opt out. All of them, I have no idea. But I would imagine a couple of, them, a couple of these guys are going to opt out for, for opportunities elsewhere. But we'll see. We'll see where they, what they do. We'll see where they go. And we'll see who the Yankees fill out their bench with. It still remains to be seen. It's going to be a uh, topic of the session moving forward. And like I said yesterday, once I get more information on the Shohei Otani drama that's going on right now for those that haven't heard he, him and his attorneys accused his translator who was fired on the spot by the dodgers of basically stealing from him 
But now we find that there were wire transfers with Otani's name. And why would his translator have a four and a half million dollar bank account? So you know, there are some suggestions being thrown up there that Shohei Otani is implicated in this somehow. But again, I'm waiting for more concrete information before I put out the stuff. Again, there's a lot of folks who think he's innocent, and that's what he positioned, how he positioned himself as. And even his translator said that Otani didn't have anything to do with this. But I don't know about you, but I don't know any translators who would have a four and a half million dollar bank account, okay? That he would most likely ever never be able to pay back. So, you know, could he could he have been placing bets for Otani? I'm not telling him about yeah, I don't know. But I'm not gonna assume that, which is why I want to wait until more information comes out so we can have a better understanding. But stay tuned with that one. This one's gonna be fascinating. And again, this is just a piece of unnecessary drama for the Yankees. I mean, not the Yankees, the Dodgers. Okay. I'm glad it's not the Yankees. So, you know, and with Yamamoto, I mean, he got lit up by the Padres today. Again, as much as it's fun for, you know, us Yankee fans to relish in that, I think he's going to make the adjustments, and I think he'll do fine this year. You know, I didn't want him to get lit up today. I'd rather him get lit up when it comes to the Bronx in June. So, and again, I'm, you know, innocent until proven guilty, in my, in my opinion, as it pertains to showing our time. But I'm going to say the same thing about his translator as well. So, I don't know yet. We'll, we'll wait and see what else happens. And uh, I'll keep you updated one way or the other. So stay tuned. Have a great night. Talk to you later.